FIFO and LIFO Inventory Cost Problem 1. Lemon Company purchased 400 units for $20 each on January 31st. It purchased 440 units for $22 each on February 28th. It sold a total of 550 units for $40 each from March 1st to December 31st. What is the cost of ending inventory on December 31st if the company uses the first-in, first-out FIFO inventory costing method? Assume the company uses the perpetual inventory system. LIFO versus FIFO questions, students' favorites, they love these. Some students not so much, but most students, they think they're really interesting. The key when you're dealing with FIFO versus LIFO questions is what is the question asking? Here, what is the cost of ending inventory on December 31st? And also the key is to determine which method is being used. Is it FIFO or LIFO or weighted average? Here, it's FIFO. Those two elements are the most important aspects of the question. And remember, reading is key. If you didn't look at that, if you examined it using LIFO, you get a different answer. If you were examining for the cost of goods sold, not the ending inventory, you could get a different answer. So we're looking for the ending inventory on December 31st, and we're also looking, we're using the, we're assuming the FIFO method applies. Now, when you're setting up these questions, the first thing you always want to do after you determine what the question's asking is to set up the layers, the layers of when the company purchased inventory. So we're told, and you go chronologically, and I gave the information chronologically in order. However, you could have a faculty member or you could have a client that gives you stuff reverse chronological or just mixes everything up. Here, you want to you wanna think about things in chronological order. And that way, if you use the same approach, whether it's FIFO or LIFO or weighted average, you're always using the same and you can use the same. You can make sure that you, the direction you go when you're considering these, this analysis, it applies across the board. Okay, so the first layer, if you look at our dates, January 31st is the first layer. I'm going to put a little one. So that's our first layer. On January 31st, we'll put 131, the company purchased 400 units at $20 each. Now, some students like to calculate, you know, the total of that, right? That's um, $8,000. I'm just going to say 400 units, I'm going to put at $20. That way you know that 400 is the units, and then, you know, the dollar sign is the price per unit. All right, next layer. So I also remember in FIFO versus LIFO questions, all the inventory is identical. And the idea is that the prices have changed. So think of it like lumber. Lumber prices change all the time. Or think about something else that's a raw material. And the idea is that there's no difference in quality. It's identical items. Next date, next layer, we're told that the company purchased 440 units on February 28th. So we'll put 228. And again, chronological. So 440. And the amount purchased is $22. Now, these are the only two layers, but and before we jump into determining the ending inventory, let's just take a second, and if you want to stop the video, take note of a few things. All right, as the date goes on, you see the prices are increasing. The prices are increasing, and the reason why I want to bring note to this is because sometimes you might get a question or you might just need to understand this for practice purposes if you have a client, but if prices are increasing, then you can explain to a client, you can answer on an exam, what the general, what the trend will result in, in terms of ending inventory being higher than LIFO, FIFO versus LIFO. You can do a FIFO versus LIFO comparison and you can determine what the answer will be. So if you ever get a conceptual question, you're like, okay, this is conceptual. You can always use numbers and you can think about just real basic numbers, do a few products, uh, you know, $1, $2, you know, the next layer, that would be increasing. Or $2 to $1, that would be decreasing. And you could always plug in these respective amounts. And that's why students, when you understand them, FIFO versus LIFO questions are, are students' best friends when it comes to exams and, and practice because it's one of these things you can answer, whether it's conceptual or calculation-based using numbers because we all love, you know, objective numbers. All right, those are our layers. Now, again, remember what we're doing here. We're applying FIFO. We have to apply FIFO here. That's what the company uses. 
FIFO first in, first out, also known as LISH, L-I-S-H. I'll explain that in a moment. And we're determining the ending inventory. Now, there's only one sale here. You might have a question that has multiple sales, lots more uh, layers of purchases. It's the same application as you go. We're told the company sold a total of 550 units for $40 each. First thing you want to do, once you determine how many layers there are total, you add them up. We have 840. Now, we're not going to put an amount because there's different amounts. Okay. 550 units have been used, have been sold during the year. The idea here is we're only focusing on ending inventory, so we only care about what the cost of the ending, ending inventory is. Now, if we're using FIFO, which means L-I-S-H, LISH, L stands for last, I stands for in, S stands for still, and H stands for here. So the idea is that the first units, so FIFO, the first ones coming in are the first ones sold, and the last ones are the ones still here. Now, if we're selling 550 units, think about the layers. These sales take place from between March 1st and December 31st. So we have these two layers, the January and the February. No, no, assume no sales took place in between January and February. The company had to stock up. Now we've got all these, these sales between March 1st and December 31st and just these two layers. The 550 units sold, they're first going to knock out that layer, that first layer. Sure, I shouldn't say that, right? Because the, the, the first layer on, Jan, on, on January 31st, the 400 at 20. So if we, if we knock that layer completely out, the 400 at 20, we're going to have 550 minus 400. We're going to have 150 units that come from the next layer. The next, which is the second layer. And that is the February 28th layer. So the idea here is that looking at the units sold, the 550 units, they are made up of 400 at $20 each and 150 at $22 each. Now, if you were calculating cost of goods sold, you would multiply those two numbers and add the two numbers together. You would you know, multiply these 400 at 20, which is 8 8,000 and 150 at 22, you would get that product, you would add the two products together and you would boom, get your cost of goods sold. But we're not asked cost of goods sold. We're asked ending inventory. If we completely eliminated the January 31st layer and we've sold 150 of the 440 units in the February layer. So the February layer, so the January, looking at our ending inventory. So EI for ending inventory. January, that's gone, right? This is FIFO. February, we started with 440. We subtract away 150. There's 290 units left in ending inventory, and the cost of that was $22 per unit. So 290 times $22 per unit is $6,380. You've just determined what the ending inventory is in this problem. The ending inventory of those 290 units at a cost of $22 per unit is $6,380. Before I conclude the problem, we already we went through and I set it up to calculate cost of goods sold for you, which is the other side of the question. But remember, you can also do FIFO versus LIFO conceptual calculations thinking about uh, prices going up. Here, prices went up versus prices going down. Ending inventory versus cost of goods sold versus tax effect. You can do all those things applying that. Again, the question was asking for ending inventory, and we did just that.